all right bomb dia mis amigos uh, john ankenberg he is stupid popular all right and so let's listen to what these guys say yeah all right now talk about the fact that these children that come into the millennial kingdom that uh have the choice because they come in and they're alive we also have the people that have been in heaven the tribulation uh, folks that have been raptured and the fact is they have glorified bodies tell the difference between a regular physical body and a glorified body well the glorified body for example we we're talking about them having children the physical body people uh, they will have a relationship with a woman we'll know who our wife is or our husband was and we'll understand that relationship of fellowship with them, but not have any physical union. Therefore, as Christians, those who are raptured out before the tribulation begins, they'll have a glorified body. They will not have a sexual relationship. These physical bodied people, the ones that eat of the tree of life and live forever, they'll be able to have children. And not only in the kingdom period, that thousand years, but really the kingdom is the front porch of eternity future and everything that happens in the kingdom will extend on to eternity future and these physical body people will be able to have children in eternity future all right so uh, I'm not so stupid to eternity to future. me this sounds like a Mormon pretending to be a Christian because this is exactly what Mormons teach and it's the polar opposite of what Jesus teaches. All right, so in Matthew 22, for in the resurrection they neither marry nor are given in marriage, but are as the angels of God in heaven. All right, so let's, let's break this down here. In the resurrection they do not marry so when is the resurrection well first of all let's get to the end time Jesus has asked what will be the end of the world and the end of the world is when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven and that is when the angels gather together the elect all right and first the dead in Christ shall rise and then those of us which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air and so shall we ever be with the Lord alright so when we are changed from our corruptible body into our incorruptible body or as these guys say into our glorified bodies there are no more people that are still left in their corruptible bodies alright because when this happens when we are changed it is the end of incorruption and death is swallowed up in victory alright so what this guy is suggesting is that they will continue to have sex all right. They will continue to have sex and continue to produce babies and continue to die. All right. And um <laughs> this is an, an example of what we're reading here all throughout the Bible deceivers mockers in the last time who should walk after their own ungodly lust see he doesn't want to be glorified he wants to be one of those that are having sex for all eternity all right and that's what he's teaching all right and this is not something to be taken lightly right this is uh, a warning that we're being given multiple times knowing this first knowing this first that there should come in the last days scoffers walking after their own lust what do you think that means well this guy here made it very 
simple, very clear to see that he is walking after his own lust and trying to fit the Bible into his own lust, right? In 1 John chapter 2, think about this and compare this to what this guy is saying. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world passes away, and the lust thereof. Therefore, <laughs> but he that doeth the will of God abides forever. Okay. There, the world passes away, the lust passes away, it's the end of the world, death is swallowed up in victory, there is no more marrying and giving in marriage, there is no more childbearing, there is no more death, no more sorrow, no more crying, no more pain. It's a new world that we're about to enter. Alright, so all these things that are of the world, that are not of God, will pass away. These, you know, lust, these are worldly things. They are not everlasting things. They are not all eternity things. And it's incredible. It's incredible. These Are these guys Christian or are they Mormons? Really? All right, so <clears throat> I, you know, I just wanted to point out that there is no thousand-year reign, there is no seven-year tribulation, and if we go to, I think it's Revelation 11. I think, I mean, you hear these people. It's the same people that say Jesus reigns a thousand years. It's the same people. Yet the Bible says Jesus shall reign forever. He shall reign forever and ever. And even in Luke chapter 1, it says Jesus will, will uh, reign over the house of Jacob forever. And of his kingdom, there shall be no end. Jesus doesn't reign a thousand years. He reigns forever. And there... You're not going to be having sex forever and ever and ever. Think about all the pain and the suffering that we endure today because of the complications of childbirth. Whether it be family, husband and wife, the loss of child, uh, the loss of children, uh, the agony of the uh, when the, our child suffers, we suffer. Uh, it's just like life. It's full of misery. We don't put our hope into misery. We put our hope into everlasting life. A world without the complications that we endure today.